بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today inshallah we will discuss some of the virtues of, of the month of Ramadan As we all know Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and it has some advantages and virtues that Allah Azza wa has put in this month and all Muslims around the world know that this month is a holy month that is why a lot of them do and save a lot of the good deeds they wanted to do throughout the year and do it in Ramadan I know like 90% of Muslims that I know of pay their zakah, get this percentage of their savings on the month of Ramadan, hoping and wishing that Allah Azza wa would uh, magnify their reward because it is on this holy month of Ramadan. One of the virtues of the holy month of Ramadan is that the Quran was revealed in that holy month. Allah Almighty says what translates to the month of Ramadan during which the Quran was revealed. This is a guidance for mankind and a clear proof of the fast of the month. So uh, this month we uh, glorify it and we think greatly and highly of it because this revelation, the final revelation to mankind and this is what Muslims believe there is no there is no divine revelation after the Quran this Quran was revealed on the month of Ramadan also one of the virtues of this holy month is that the gates of heaven is opened for all those who would like to come in and the gates of hell is locked and closed to prevent people from going into hell and the devils are in chain are put in chains and this is one of the attributes one of the uh, virtues of Ramadan one might ask if the devils are chained so uh, why do we do sin in Ramadan why do people fall into sin if the devils are chained well scholars have different opinions about this issue the easiest one is that it is your inner self that is making you, provoking you to make the sins. It's because we are not all angels. We don't have that cr cr uh, crystal clear conscious that always derives and, and, and directs you to do good. No, we have our ups and downs. But during Ramadan, the downs are way less. The sins, if you monitor the Islamic world, you would find that the sins drop like 70%. People, people are deterred from doing sin because the devils are put in chains. One of the virtues of this holy month of fasting in general, that there is a gate, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us. There is, a, there is a gate to paradise. How many gates are there to paradise? Does anybody know? Eight. There are eight gates for paradise. And how many are there for uh, hell? Seven. There are seven. I wish that we are encountered with the gates of paradise, inshallah, and Allah will grant us the opportunity to go in and to stay away from hell. But to know is, is, is good. So there is a gate in paradise that is called Ar-Rayyan. 
and the gates have names. So this gate is called a rayyan. The other one is specialized for people who, f for, who, who pray, and the one is for people who uh, do other uh, kind of uh, deeds. So on that day, on the day of uh, resurrection, it will say, Allah Azza wa Jal will make that door talk. And this is not strange because all what Allah Azza wa Jal has created can be given the power to talk if Allah wishes so. But we cannot hear except those that we are allowed to hear. The stones, the walls, the mountains, the trees are, are all creations of Allah. And they are all praising Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't think that the stone you kick with your foot is just a stone. It is a stone. But this stone is worshipping Allah while you are performing sins. So in a sense, this stone is better than you. If you can continue on doing this form of sins and neglecting Allah Azza wa Jal. Because he is doing what Allah has ordered him to do. So at that day, the gate, Allah Azza wa Jal will make the gate speak. And, and, and it will say, where are those who fasted? It's calling from the people on the day of the resurrection. Those who fasted, come in. So when the last one of them enter the, uh, that, uh, through that gate and passes through that gate to paradise, the last one of those who fast, it will be shut, it will be closed, it will be locked for good. No one will enter there except those who fast. And no one will enter from the gate of prayer except those who pray. So is there any harm of someone entering from all these eight gates? It's no harm. So if you fast, if you pay zakah, if you uh, pray, if you do what Allah Azza wa tells you to do, there is no harm, none whatsoever, that you enter from all these eight. And I know for sure, and I know this, I take this for granted, that there is a person that I know of will definitely enter of those eight gates. Do you know who that is? Except with the exception of the Prophet Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr the first caliph in Islam and the best and the highest ranked Muslim in the uh, Muslim uh, Ummah. And he will be the first to enter paradise after the Prophet ﷺ. No one from his Ummah, from the nation of the Muslims, will enter paradise before Abu Bakr as Siddiq. May Allah Azza wa gather us with him. Uh, also, one of the virtues of, of, of Ramadan that Allah Almighty has set a reward. Few simple words that you are rewarded with. But it is so huge that if you live your life to fulfill this, wallah, it is enough. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, imanan, meaning believing that it is obligatory on him. Wahtisaban, meaning for the sake of Allah and for the sake of the reward that Allah has done for those who fast Ramadan, Allah will forgive all his previous sins. Do you have sins? Do we have sins? We have piles and piles, tons of tons of sins. God knows how, how much of them. But we rely deeply on the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal on the mercy of Allah Azza wa So Allah is giving us the ways to ask His forgiveness and to erase these sins. What do you want to do? Fast Ramadan. Why are you fasting Ramadan? I don't know. Everybody is fasting, so what the heck? Let me fast with them. It's nice. Everybody is doing it. In mean, I mean, Ramadan, I like it because we eat a lot of desserts, a lot of food that, uh, after Maghrib prayer. Man, it, it's excellent. A lot of sambusak. That, that's why you're fasting Ramadan? Yeah, everybody is fasting. That's what I'm doing it. So what about if you travel abroad, if you go somewhere where you don't have any family, why should I fast? No one to make my sambusak for me. Then this is not for the sake of Allah Azza wa You don't believe in it. Why do you fast? I believe it is obligatory. Okay, then, but uh, I, don't, I, I, I fast because I'm afraid of punishment. If there is no punishment, I wouldn't fast. No, you should fast for the reward. You should fast because Allah wants you to do the, so. And we all do this, alhamdulillah. The majority of Muslims do this. Maybe they don't pose for a while and think, why do I do it? 
But if they do, they will definitely reach the conclusion that they're doing it for the sake of Allah Azza If you do that, all your sins are forgiven. This is one reward that you must not let it pass away. Five prayers. If you pray from one prayer to the other, Allah forgives you your sins. Umrah. If you make Umrah to the second time you make Umrah, Allah forgives you whatever happened in between, providing that you avoid the major sins. If you commit adultery, no, this is a different story. If you uh, drink intoxicants, it's a different story. This is not forgiven. But the, th the small things, that the small sins which we have piles and piles of, Allah will forgive if you do, as uh, he said, to fast um, with the intention, with, uh, belie with the belief, and uh, so on. Also, uh, there is, uh, probably this would be the, our last uh, virtue of Ramadan, we will continue inshallah uh, later on or through the question and answer if a question is, is asked. Uh, Allah Azza wa has slaves that he will set free during the month of Ramadan. This is a prophetic saying. Allah, Rasul wasalam, says that Allah Azza wa has every night and every day of Ramadan some slaves among us that he would set free from hell. He would say, give them a declaration these guys are out of hell. Although we're still living, we're, 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 we're doing our daily jobs, but it's been registered at Allah's side that you are forgiven. And also the Prophet Wasallam, and each one of them has a da'wah. If he makes a request, Allah will answer it for him, definitely. And, but unfortunately, we do, not, we do not know which one of, that, of us is that person. Therefore, we should always keep on calling Allah, making dua, and asking Him. Uh, there are a few things that we should elaborate on, but I think this is all the time we have uh, for today's lesson. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, sir. During the month of Ramadan, the Holy Quran was revealed. It means that if we recite the Quran during the month of Ramadan, the rewards want to be multiple and want to be more and more? Whatever you do in Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal will multiply it for you. All good deeds in Ramadan will be multiplied. The deed is multiplied to 10, up to 700 times. And this is from the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. Nevertheless, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite the Quran and revise it with uh, the Ark Gabriel, the Archangel Gabriel, Jibre Jibreel, he used to recite it with him once every Ramadan to revise his uh, Quran with uh, Jibreel. Therefore, it is indeed something that we should do most uh, likely in Ramadan than and, and other than Ramadan. The uh, Prophet ﷺ said that uh, on the day of judgment, fasting and the Quran. See, they, they are materialized now. Fasting and the Qur'an will come as intercessors. They will talk. And one of them will say, Oh Allah, fasting will say, Oh Allah, this servant of yours, I deprived him from eating, drinking, and his desires. Oh Allah, let me intercede for him. Shafa'a. And the Qur'an would come. See, it's the month of Qur'an. And the Quran would say, Oh Allah, I deprived him from his sleep. This guy did not sleep because of me. He used to pray three, four hours every night. When, when everybody was asleep, he used to wake up in the middle of the night, pray, reciting me. Oh Allah, let me intercede for him. And their intercession is accepted, as the Prophet ﷺ said. So Quran is definitely is recited in Ramadan. But the problem is, a lot of Muslims... Don't read Qur'an except in Ramadan. After the end of Ramadan, for a, a total of 11 months, the Qur'an is either in their car. Why? For protection. They think it's a shield. It protects you from accidents. It pr protects the car from being stolen. Well, we should put a lot of copies in, in the banks so nobody would rob banks. It's, it's not a protection in this physical uh, form. It, it's, it's an innovation to think this way. Or they would put it on the shelf. And when, the, when Ramadan comes, they start dusting it and cleaning it because they have not... No, no, this is the wrong way of treating uh, Qur'an. Qur'an should be more than uh, that. 
Uh, any other question? Well, in Hadith Qudsi, it's narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that every action of Bani Adam, if every action of man is for him except fasting, it's for Allah. Now, I may ask, it's only, uh, also prayer is for Allah, zakah is also for Allah. Why this stress? What is the significance behind this statement? Uh, this statement, as scholars explain it, they say that all the actions of the son of Adam is for him, meaning that he's doing it. And everybody else is seeing him doing it. So he will be rewarded accordingly because one of us may pray just for the sake that his ma managing director is next to him. The other would pray just to please his father. But fasting, no one would know if you're doing it or not, except Allah Azza wa Jal. And it is so great. It is a, a, a great form of worship to the extent that Allah Azza wa Jal Almighty rewards that personally. And he takes it as something between you and him. While all the other form of worship is between you and him, but people may share it with you. People would benefit from your paying the zakah. Maybe you would pay uh, the zakah to show off. Instead of doing it in secrecy, you would say, hey, hey guys, this is $100. It's, it's for the poor. Okay, why are you sh showing it? Well, to get some uh, thanks from people. While fasting, nobody would know. Nobody would go on carrying a flag saying, hey, listen, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. It's something between you and Allah. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal would reward people uh, accordingly. Uh, is there any question? Um, sometimes, you know, uh, fasting becomes like an everyday thing without like the feeling of the virtues or the thawab that mm -hmm. you would be getting for it. So like, what are the things that could be done like every day that could renew the feeling of that I'm doing, I'm fasting because of, you know, I want this salawab and I want this and I want that. Very good. I want this reward. Okay. Unfortunately, all forms of worship is like this. Yeah, I mean, even prayer. A lot of people pray. Why do you pray? I'm praying. They don't stop. They don't pose. They don't have the total uh, awareness of what they're doing. So every now and then you should pause. You should stop and consider what am I doing it this for? Okay, I'm doing it for the belief of Allah Azza wa Jal. I'm doing it for the reward. And I want to get closer to Allah by doing this. This is a form of refreshing your form of worship. Yeah, I mean, a lot of time we do things just because everybody else is doing it. Once uh, it is reported that two of the scholars were walking side by side. And uh, a funeral passed by them. People carrying a, a, dead, a dead man to his uh, graveyard and... So one of the scholars said to the other, let's go and follow it because we have a big reward if we do so. So the guy said, okay, give me a second. And he paused for a second and said, okay, let's go. So the, the, the first scholars asked him, what did you do? He said, when you said, let's go and follow the funeral, I wanted to do that because I wanted to be with you. And then I realized that I will not be rewarded for that. So I said to myself, but, okay, let it be 100% for Allah Azza wa Jal. And I paused for changing my intention, trying to uh, concentrate that this is solely for Allah Azza wa Jal. All forms are, of worship should be like this. You should fast because you're fasting for Allah Azza wa Jal. You should pray because you know that prayer is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and that is why you're doing it. Refreshing it, it's like refreshing a web page. If 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 disconnected, you just refresh it and it comes all all again. By doing that, you get more reward, and by doing that, you uh, uh, realize that whatever you're doing, you're doing it for the sake of Allah, and you will double or triple the reward you uh, normally get. And and unfortunately, we see this during prayer time. A lot of people go to the prayer because it's a habit. They pray Maghrib and Isha to meet people because they're going to their market or to do shopping. But they don't pray Fajr. They don't pray Asr. They neglect prayer if, if it's on their weekends. They pray when it's weekdays because they pray while at work. But when it's weekends, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal is not there. Astaghfirullah wa tubilay. Now this is wrong. You should, whatever you do, you should do it for the sake of Allah. And believe me, if you have this intention, Allah will reward you even if you're playing sports. If you're working out in the gym with the intention of getting myself fit, we're being able to perform salah, perform uh, prayer, perform uh, fasting, 
with a healthy uh, attitude, Allah will reward you for every bench press you do. And if you drink a cup of tea with the intention of getting or being awake so I can pray more at night, I want to be alert, then you will be uh, rewarded for that. And may Allah Azza wa Jal reward us all for all the good deeds we do and grant us the best reward there is. And I think this is all the time we have until we meet, inshallah, next uh, lesson. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.